Let us look at another example of sequencing n jobs on one machine. A bomb squad faces the following situation. A terrorist has planted five bombs in an airport building endangering the lives and property. The squad has located all five bombs and must now proceed to dismantle them. Now because of the limited staffing the bombs can be dismantled only sequentially. So basically there are five bombs which have been placed by terrorists in an airport building. However, in order to dismantle them, we only have one team and therefore we have to dismantle them sequentially. Now unfortunately there is not much time left and the squad must choose judicially the order in which the bombs have to be dismantled. Now the following data represents a reliable estimate by the squad. So we have five bombs here, one, two, three, four and five. Now we have been given the processing time or the time to dismantle, which is three hours for the first bomb and so on. And we have also been given the time remaining before the bomb explodes, which is nothing but the due date. So starting from the time when the squad knows that there are five bombs, bomb number one is going to explode in the next nine hours. Bomb number two is going to explode in the next 11.25 hours. Bomb number three will explode in the next 11 hours and so on. So now we have been asked to find out what sequence for dismantling the bombs would you recommend to the squad. What should be the criteria that this squad must optimize. So let us look at a couple of methods of sequencing n jobs on one machine and see which method works the best in this scenario. So this is the data that has been provided to us in this example. Let us first use the shortest processing time method. Now as per this method, jobs which have the lowest processing time are sequenced first. So in this case we have two jobs with the lowest processing time or in other terms the bombs. So number two and number five have the lowest time to dismantle. So we will first process let's say two then five. Next is job 3 or bomb 3, so 3, next is bomb number 1 and next is bomb number 4. Let us note down the processing time, time to dismantle for number 2 is 1, for 5 is 1, for 3 is 2. For bomb number 1 is 3 and for bomb number 4 is 4. Let us also note down the time remaining before the bomb explodes. So for bomb number 2 it is 11.25. For bomb number 5 it is 5. Bomb number 3 11. Bomb number 1 9. And bomb number 4 is 6. Now let us find out the flow time or 
the cumulative time period within which these bombs will be dismantled. So the first bomb will be dismantled in one hour. Now the second bomb will have to be dismantled after the first bomb has been dismantled. So it will take one plus one. This is equal to two hours. Third one will be two plus two, which is four hours. Bomb number one will be four plus three, which is seven hours. And bomb number four will be seven plus four, which is 11 hours. Now let us find out if we were able to dismantle the bomb using this method or not. If not, then the bomb will explode. So let's find out the lateness. So bomb number two is going to explode after 11.25 hours, but we can dismantle it after one hour. So this is not late. Bomb number five is going to explode after five hours and we are going to dismantle it within two hours. So this is also not late. Bomb number three is going to explode after 11 hours and we can dismantle it within four hours. So this is also not late. Bomb number one is going to explode after nine hours and we can dismantle it within seven hours. So this is also not late. Bomb number four is going to explode in six hours, but we'll be able to dismantle it after 11 hours. So this is going to explode. So 11 minus six, which is five hours is the delay. But this method doesn't help us because if we use this, this bomb is going to explode. So let us use another method, which is the due date method. And let's find out if this method will prevent the bombs from being exploded. So as for this method, the criteria for sequencing is the due date or in our example, it will be the time remaining before the bomb explodes. So first the bomb, which has the least time remaining before it explodes is to be sequenced. So the first bomb will be bomb number five because it has the lowest time remaining before the bomb explodes. So first we'll prioritize bomb number five. Next will be bomb number four. Next will be bomb number one. Next will be bomb number three. And the last will be bomb number two. Let us note down the time to dismantle. So for bomb number five, the time to dismantle is one hour. For bomb number four, time to dismantle is four hours. For bomb number one, time to dismantle is three hours. For bomb number three, time to dismantle is two hours. And for bomb number two, time to dismantle is one hour. So this is the bomb. Time to dismantle and let's find out the explosion time remaining. So for five, five hours, four, six hours, one, nine hours, three, 11 hours and two, 11.25 hours. Now let us find out the flow time. That means within how much cumulative time will we be able to dismantle these bombs? So the first one, which is bomb number five, can be dismantled within one hour. Now the second one, which is bomb number four, 
will be dismantled after the bomb number five has been dismantled so it will be one plus four hours because bomb number four takes four hours to be dismantled which is five hours bomb number one will be five plus three which is eight hours bomb number three will be eight plus two which is ten hours and bomb number two will be ten plus one which is eleven hours let us find out if we were able to prevent the explosion of the bomb by finding out the lateness. So bomb number 5 is going to explode in 5 hours but we can dismantle it within the first hour. So this is not late. Bomb number 4, the explosion is going to happen at the 6th hour but we can dismantle it within 5 hours so this is also not late. Bomb number 1 the explosion time remaining is 9 hours but we can dismantle it within 8 hours so lateness is 0 bomb number 3 the explosion time is 11 hours while we can dismantle it within the next 10 hours so this is also not late and bomb number 2 the explosion time remaining is 11.25 hours while the time which we will take to dismantle it is 11 hours so this is also not late so using this method we will be able to prevent the explosion of the bomb so this is the sequence in which the bombs should be dismantled by the squad and this is the criteria that is the due date criteria which they should use now without solving this example let's see if we can get clues by looking at this data and trying to find out which method we should be using so for bomb number one time to dismantle is three hours while the time remaining before the bomb explodes is nine hours so there's a lot of lot of gap here right we have we have enough time bomb number two time to dismantle is one hour Whereas the time remaining before the bomb explodes is 11.25 hours. So there is a lot of gap here. For bomb number 3 again time to dismantle is 2 hours. Whereas time remaining before the bomb explodes is 11 hours. So there is also a lot of, lot of gap here. But for bomb number 4 time to dismantle is 4 hours. And time remaining before the bomb explodes is six hours so this one has very less gap four hours is required to dismantle it and only six hours are remaining so we only have two hours to waste before we have to jump onto this one bomb number five takes one hour to dismantle and the time remaining before the bomb explodes is five hours so there is a decent amount of gap, there is 4 hours before we can jump on to bomb number 5. Now looking at the processing times, so if we prioritized using the processing time, then of course we will be prioritizing bomb number 2, bomb number 5. And then after that bomb number 3, bomb number 1 and then bomb number 4. However, bomb number 4 is the most critical because it only has a gap of 2 hours. So we can't delay jumping on to bomb number 4. Now if we look at the other method, the due date method, where we will prioritize based on the time remaining before the bomb explodes, first we will be prioritizing bomb number 5 and then we will be prioritizing bomb number 4. That means we'll only spend one hour before we jump on to bomb number four. So this is the criteria which kind of makes a lot of sense. So hence the due date method is the preferred method for solving this 